So uh, I just want it to be known, this video got as low as 28% on the dislike to like ratio. Within 24 hours of the DLC coming out, jumped up to 40%. Turns out, doesn't take a genius to figure out pre-release reviews suck. So uh, I'm joined with my co-commentator here. Hello, hello. Okay, uh, so we beat just about everything. We killed, from what I saw in the boss list, we killed most every boss. We've been to every area. We got like every upgrade. We did not need a guide for virtually any of it. And not we, that we could anyway. We beat the DLC in one long play session, just one all-nighter. So it took us about 12, 12 to 13 hours to get anywhere from 70% to 99% full completion. So this is just, just right away, do not buy this. Buy it on sale. This is absolutely not worth $40 or $50. Okay, so we're going to talk about everything, spoilers included here. Uh, in fact, on my list of topics, we're actually going to talk about the ending first, because I believe this is such a bad ending to a DLC. This is the Game of Thrones season eight of Elden Ring. It is so fucking bad. It has retroactively made the main story worse. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to just talk for for a good couple minutes here. Uh, you can chime in whenever, but this this is a lot of yeah, just I'm, monologue. I'm not as I'm, familiar I'm, with the lore. I, I am, and but, I'm super passionate okay. about this topic. Okay, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do your thing. Okay, so I so 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 this is a weird rape incest story. You might think that sounds ridiculous, but let me just lay out what happens in this DLC for you people who don't know, and uh, Vadi hasn't released a video yet. So for you guys, let me just explain it for you. Mikola, we did not know what Mikola's power was. We thought it was to stop outer gods and entities based off of what his needle did. But no, I guess that needle that just stops all these like weird godlike entities, that's just something he just casually made. Okay, anyway. So Mikola, it is lore dropped in this DLC that Mikola makes a promise with Redon that he's gonna like marry him, make him his consort, whatever, whatever, in a perfect world that he's going to create. Which, by the way, zero hints towards any of this anywhere. They literally drop this in the final cutscene after you uh, after you beat Redon. By the way, Redon's the final boss. This, despite Godwin making so much more sense, but I'll talk about that in a second. I, I have or so Mesmer, I, I have so much to say else. about. I have so much to say about this. Okay, so Mikola. Mind controls Melania to fight Radon, knowing that at the very least she'll kill herself to uh, weaken him permanently so that he will die. Then he mind controls Moog so that Moog kills himself fighting the Tarnished and lets him open a portal to this world. So he can then use Moog's body to reanimate Radon because he couldn't control Radon because Radon is like the Star Scourge, had control over fate and was able to stop time. Stopping time stopped fate, so he was able to stop all this mind control shit from happening to him specifically. So he, he, he mind controls the rest of the family to kill Radon, then uses Moog's body to reanimate him. You learn this from talking to the Moog NPC, by the way, and yes. like doing his quest line. And Radon doesn't talk. He's completely Mikola's puppet. So Mikola is effectively raping Radon. Like there is no. And, and this and this is not a uh, speculation at all. By the way, yeah, no, it is very is, explicitly this is literally stated what's told. that Mikola's power is basically mind controlling everyone in this alternate dimension. Oh no, he like, can mind control people. No, 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 no. He can mind control people in the main world too. That's that's yeah, the that's call. True. That's the call that's of the true. tarnish that brings us yeah. together to go there. So no no Mikola. So this means that like characters like Moog and Melania, they have no character. Moog doesn't believe any of this dynasty shit. That's just Mikola mind controlling, feeding him this shit to make him do this just so he can die, so he can use his body to bring yeah. back Radon. So Moog has no motivation, no character. Melania has no motivation, no character. They're all just effectively husks that are puppets for Mikola, and you wouldn't know this. Until the very end of the DLC, assuming you're doing all the quests. So this means every time you play Elden Ring now, just know that these epic figures, they're not fighting each other for control or to become Elden Lord or for any reason other than a femboy got horny and wanted his brother to dom him and he said no. So now he's mind controlling all of his siblings in this grand plot. That is literally the story of Elden Ring now. Thank you. Thank you, George. By yes. the way, I also just feel the need to point this out. Incest is literally in like every three episodes of Game of Thrones. Incest is very clearly George's kink. And uh, shocker, shocker, 
it shows through. This is the first time FromSoft has ever done like a real hardcore incest thing. Not some like weird Zeus style thing like with Gwyn and shit. No, I'm talking like real hardcore. I am so obsessed with you. I'm going to reach through death and bring you back so you can fuck my bussy. Kind of, kind of incest. By like, the way, like Radon, like a lot of the actions that Radon takes is trying to avoid getting down, yeah. like, like having to, like he wants to get away from Mikola. He doesn't fucking like this femboy like yeah. a lot of the actions he takes or took in the base game we're trying to avoid this yeah. whole being Radon, a part of Radon is like the only good character in the game when he likes Mikola's kind approach but when he found out that Mikola is using mind control and he's not actually swaying people with his like you know facts and logic that he's like oh this is horrible and then Radon decides to take up cause to become the Elden Lord to set things right Radon is literally the only good character in the story I and now rage. he's now he's just basically yeah, being raped. Liter literally yeah, a sex slave. Yeah. Yeah. He he has no free will, no autonomy to do anything, but other than what Mikola tells him. He doesn't okay. even talk, dude. He doesn't yeah, even He talk. doesn't even have grunts. Like the final boss is so shit. It should Okay, here's the other thing. It should be Godwin. That's the final boss because all throughout the base game we hear about Mikola and Godwin be having a special relationship. They're really close because Mikola like loves life and is so nice and you know Godwin like with death and stuff like there, there's like a whole thing with this. So it's like but people say that, oh, well, uh, Rani destroyed Godwin's soul. Dude, Mikola becomes a god. He is god. Like, Cobson, I'm Cobb here, you know? Like, he can just say he has the power to bring the souls back. Who cares? You're writing, my brother in Christ, you are writing the story. You can say yeah. that Mikola is so special and so powerful that now as a god, he can even transcend death. And he can bring people back, even if their souls destroyed. Which, by and the way... And also, which... We have a precedent for people come back from the dead all the time. Which, hold on, hold on. By the way, character. one of the themes of this DLC is showing you how just how far America went to go to be really cruel to like try to avoid death and stuff. So Mikola, the outcast son, being the one finding a way to truly revert death with this soul stuff. You could also put a twist on it where it's like, yeah, it brings you back, but you're not your true self. Blah blah blah. It's not a good thing because the, like with Sekiro, like part of the story is Sekiro is living forever is not even worthy in the like a good thing in the first place like there's just so many things here's the other thing the shadow realm is supposed to be the opposite of the main realm the glomide queen is supposed to be merica's opposite why is she not even mentioned in this dlc like ah okay that's enough that's enough on the the story lore ending because holy fuck it is it is just so bad it is just so fucking bad that it actually makes the base game worse because now every time you deal with these characters you know for a fact that they actually have zero reason to be doing what they're doing just one guy in the dlc that you only see one time at the very end is the reason why this is all happening fuck i that, mean that it really so feels like the entire dlc is constructed around the having Radon a cool yeah. twist final boss because yeah. it doesn't make it doesn't follow it really just doesn't Okay. And it's out of nowhere. You just walk in, you're like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck? Yeah, dude, you, if you weren't doing the one Mogwin guy's NPC quest line, when you walk into this final boss, he literally is just standing there staring at you. So you walk through the boss fog, and, oh, a reused asset is staring at me. And it's like, huh? Where did you come from? How are you here? What are you doing here? And then he says nothing. They couldn't even give him a grunt or a quote or like, a, I will fight you in honorable combat. No, he literally, they could not even be fucking asked to give him a voice. Like, it is so goddamn lazy, this fight. Dude, the arena he's standing in is just white sand with the same dead, solified, like, rock dead body model pasted a hundred times in it. Like, yeah. the arena he's in is lazy. The boss fight is lazy. Everything, this literally just feels like Miyazaki just wanted to be like, okay, fine. This is fan service. You guys wanted to see what it's like when we make a real boss that really challenges you? Here it is. That's what it felt like was the design document. Okay, so hold let's. On. No, let's hold on. The next thing. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Yes, hold on. Yes, I, I yes. need to talk about this because we're not done with the lore yet. There's one more thing I got to talk about. The third NPC quest line, the hidden one that most people didn't do, it takes you to uh, Matir, the, the mother of fingers. This boss irreparably damaged the lore and story of Elden Ring. It, it is over. It is over. Elden Ring is over, party. This boss is the source of all fingers. The three fingers of chaos, the two fingers of the greater will, 
This is where they come from. They were spawned from this creature. This creature can also communicate with all the fingers we learned during the quest line. So that means this creature made the two fingers into three fingers and is communicating with them. So that's so, the, like no the, greater will. Yeah. There either is a greater will and it's just they're, they're trying to balance messages between this and the greater will or there's just no greater will and this thing is the greater will. And they think that it's something else. Yeah. But and it's yeah, just, this is what's communicating with the fingers. So the entire motivation of the base game, by the way, is just this creature telling you to do stuff. Like, th effectively, this is the antagonist of Elden Ring right here. Because this one tells the, f the, the fingers to, you know, do the tarnish, to make Elden Lords, get people strong, so I guess we can feast on them or whatever the fuck they do. And it's like, right here, this is effectively the main villain of all of Elden Ring. And it's an optional side quest with no fanfare. I, why was it this thing the final boss if they're that this is what they were gonna do like I, i'm sorry for harping on it for 10 minutes now but the story and lore of this dlc are so fucking bad i yeah, it have can't be overstated just i have absolutely bad. zero interest in elden ring from now on as a setting to me, this setting is dead. It is pointless. And I'm sure people like Vadi and like Lore Masters are going to try to make videos with theories that like try to salvage it and make it seem like there's more going on than there is. No, dude, the NPCs like they, they kind of flat out tell you like like Ymir literally tells you this thing spawned all the fingers and that this thing has constant communication with all of them. Like this is like basically explicitly stated. So it's like, oh, so this is the thing talking to the fingers. So this must be this is the greater will. And it's like, I'm sure you can construct some crackpot theory to say that's not true, and people will latch onto it because it makes the story better. But no, man, the truth is they didn't think about this at all. Okay. Yeah, you, you can headcanon it any way you like, but this is what it is. It's bad. So, Okay, wait, now. Uh, 12, I'm just writing down so timestamps for later. 12, we stop with lore. Okay. So, now we gotta talk about Radon. This fucking boss fight is perhaps my least favorite boss fight they this, have ever made this thing is a fucking war crime <sighs> now Absolutely. by the way by the way just saying this we both beat this fight within the first night of the dlc coming out so do not even fucking try to tell me skill issue because i if there was steam achievements for this i'd be zero 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 one percent for beating this i beat this thing literally within 10 fucking hours of the dlc coming out so sh don't even try to tell me skill issue. Okay, now I'm going there to... There is a lot to talk, to talk about yeah, with Redon. Yeah, because I... don't I, even know where to start. There's so many mechanics. Okay, all right. Let me, let, let me, let me explain here for, for, just, for just a bit. Because I think this fight, what makes this fight so angry to me is that it's almost perfect. Phase one is perfect. I genuinely think phase one of this fight is perfect. Per perfect. Down, down to the last minute... A fucking detail of the mechanics. I think this fight is near perfect. Then, then he goes into phase. Well, okay, wait, hold on. There's, <laughs> there's two attacks that I have a problem with. One, uh, when he goes up in the air and he shoots meteors down, you're supposed to tell who he's targeting by who he's facing towards when he's winding up. But he winds the back so far that his fucking spine like twists back, and it's hard to tell if he's going after you, mimic tier, a summon, whatever the fuck, like the NPCs. So he can get a cheap hit on you. Second off, actually dodging the meteors. Dude, unless you have like Blundhound step or you bait him near the wall so the meteors just break before they even launch. They are Very so, difficult. They are yeah. so perfectly spaced that even I have literally went back on my replay like recording software. And I looked, I, I looked at when it was hitting me, I would literally roll like two, three frames before the first meteor hits me rolling. I tried rolling forward, back, left, right, still got clipped by one of them and getting hit by one does the full damage of like, you know, the full attack. So and this is a larger problem of the boss in general is that there's a lot of attacks where if they're not impossible to avoid it is very obtuse and incredibly specific on how you're not supposed to take damage. Yeah, okay, like like a perfect example of this is his big suck. He'll just like really quickly throw out a giant vacuum attack, which okay, you can dodge it and it's 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 tough but fair. But then he does a follow-up where he places spikes on the ground. And those spikes linger for I counted 12 seconds. They they are a lingering damage hitbox for 12 seconds. 
and it's like and you can't run away because you just got sucked in I mean, you right. can run away, but you have to like jump. It, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. like Radon has like one of one solution to resolve most of his attacks. He's almost like a Final Fantasy fourteen boss, where it's like you have to resolve it exactly one of one ways. Okay, but now I want to talk about Phase Two because I think Phase Two is a terribly designed boss. And I'm gonna say this start off. I have a thirty ninety. I have a thirty ninety, sixty four gigs of DDR five RAM, and I have a twelve nine hundred K. So uh, I my, have similar as well. I do have a 3090 as well. My, my computer is like a $5,000 computer. My computer is significantly stronger than your computer. And I play on a mix of medium and high settings. I would still drop 30 to 40 frames during this boss fight on certain yeah. moves that he would do. So if it works on your machine, I'm very glad that it does. But Which for is me, definitely more of a bigger problem with the dlc in general but These, for me yeah yeah does not run well for me and my friend here it ran like garbage for yeah. us because he would do an attack that has an after image effect that also has a lingering magic effect and it, it just it would just destroy my idea my fucking frames like i would be rocking like 120 frames he would do the attack where he like dashes forward and then like five clones of him follow i had my fps counter open i went down to like 27 frames at one point which it, also doesn't make it any easier to fucking dodge yeah, by the maybe, way maybe i'll think the fight is better and much more fair when he doesn't literally butcher my fps on like the wind up of his attack which gives me less time to react to it. Maybe I'll think it's better a better fight then, but like... And also, fuck. all those particle effects definitely obfuscate like what yeah. he's even doing a lot of the time. Where In the second phase, it, it can be hard sometimes to actually see what's happening or what you need to be dodging. because yes, a prime example, when he does the meteor attack in second phase, he always follows it up with five after-image slices that, are, that follow a perfect straight line from the center of his chest. So it's multiple clones hitting the same area, following the same path, and they're like wishy, like magic. They're they're like Mikola Kellard here. So like you have this overlapping like fucking after image effect with all these golden particles flying around, and it's like, dude, what the fuck is even happening to my screen right now? Yes, I do not think that visibility should be a factor in how hard something is. I no. think the player should always Absolutely have max not. visibility at all times. Yeah, because that's that's not difficulty. That that is that is artificial difficulty. That speaking that isn't making something hard. Speaking of artificial difficulty, every single attack he does in second phase has a follow up lingering magic effect on the ground in all directions around him, and that's only like that so that it reduces the amount of time. Like it, they're trying to make it so you can't just like do a jumping heavy attack for like bleed with like godskin peeler cheeses like that kind of shit they're like trying to stop that by limiting the amount of time you get to attack him but, but because, you cannot punish this enemy but because well you can punish some things but the punish window yeah. is so tight you have to do your fit you either need to be very tanky and have enough poise to just trade with him dead on and your weapon needs to do enough stagger damage that it staggers him or you need to let him attack like a summon or something and then you come up behind him at the last frame but or, even then, he turns or he switches aggro so fast, and it's just all, even in his first phase, all of his attacks can hit you from behind as well. Yeah, that's another You're thing. A him. lot of his attacks, like especially that ground stomp he does, a lot of his attacks, the cone around them is way bigger than the actual model. It, it looks like. And by the way, I just want to point out, original Radon on the horse in the base game had a nerf for his uh, weapon hitboxes because the base game had that problem too, to where uh, his hitboxes were deceptively larger than his model. And I cannot help but feel like maybe some of that's happening here. But yep. there's nothing, the more, there's nothing more frustrating than rolling his attack, then rolling the magic follow-up, then going to hit because it's like the final chance you get to hit, but then you still get clipped for like two, 300 damage because there's just this lingering magic ring around. And if you don't hit right there and just take that little clip, you just miss your damage window there. Yes. So do, do we want to talk about this, the scaling with this? No, no, boss? no. We'll talk about the scaling after the cheese. I want to talk about the cheese. Yeah. If, if, uh, okay. Me and Muck, we struggled here against this boss for genuinely, like, a solid two hours. I, I have no shame in admitting that. We fucking, we were on the struggle bus with this boss yeah, for a while. Like, not, like, constant attempts, 20, like, and then, two hours straight. And yeah. then, 
we swapped builds to the like hammer bro thing where you like flip with the hammer and you just go right through his attacks. I, I killed him in like four tries after that. Like it, it took a two hour affair and simplified it into something I beat within like like 12, 13 minutes. And because it just it, it just you go right through his attacks. He doesn't stagger you, and your attacks do so much stagger damage that you and Mimic Tier only have to flip into him like two or three times, and then you get to critical attack him. And the flips hit for like fucking like two, three thousand health, and then the critical hits for like two thousand health, and it's like holy shit, he's at half health already, like twenty seconds yeah. in. If you're not running like maybe one of two builds, this fight you is are... really hard. Yeah. Like you might not be able to beat this boss. Yeah, unless up. you are an extremely proficient player. I'm not gonna say it can't be and done. Not, Trust like, me. I I yeah. I'm fully I, I literally did esports. I am so for the get good mentality. Watch my dark tide videos. I will literally fucking be the most toxic person on the planet over the get good topic. But this is a point where it it was it was not fun. And the fact that I, I, what's the point in even learning him if I can just swap builds and just absolutely run a fucking train on him? No effort required. What's the yeah. point? What is even the point? And that's, I mean, that's a bigger problem with Elden Ring as a whole. There's just so many items and so much bloat. There's like 50 million talismans, 50 million weapons, 50 million ashes of war. There's inevitably going to be combinations that it doesn't matter unless FromSoft makes a boss that's like literally borderline cheating, like with hacks you're going to have an easy way to cheese it. So I really think they should focus on making fights like fun for the average person rather than making no, very if, difficult if, if you're an average Elden Ring player, you are not beating this boss. Because uh, here's, I, I'm with, comfortable with, saying with, that. Yeah, with a, if you are the average Joe and you have the average build of just like a shield and a regular straight sword, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable saying you probably physically can't beat this boss, which I don't think that's even a problem, by the way. I don't think hard skill checking people is an issue, but it's the way that he skill checks you because it's more like he build checks you. Yes. You know? If you're if you're not in like the top 1% of skill of Elden Ring players, unless you have like one of the very few builds that can proficiently kill him, you are going to have an absolutely miserable time yeah, for this and, boss. And, and that's because of the scaling. So this is where we get to talk about scaling. Let me let me pull a screenshot up here. So uh, this was my character uh, after after like the end of the DLC right here. This was uh, this is the build I ran through most of it. I swapped back. I had 81% physical damage negation. That means every hit that I take, 50 or 81% of it would get negated. Yeah, yeah would get taken away radon would hit me with some of his attacks not his second phase holy attacks like okay for example you know the attack where he flips in the air then he flips again that second yeah. flip would half health me i have 2200 health 81 percent damage negation uh give me a calculator give me uh give me give me give me a calculator real quick so like let, let's just let's just let's just let's just hold on wait a minute. I need I need to timestamp this because we're we're changing topics. Sorry, 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 yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, wait. We start talking about scaling. Okay. So look, look, look. Twenty two hundred HP and eighty one percent damage reduction. So how hard would Radon have to hit me? Let's say he does ten thousand damage minus eighty one percent. How much damage does he do? 1900 so that's almost one shotting you so it's it's just it's just yeah. like hold on hold on so like uh let's say 8000 like this is the point that i'm making the scaling yeah. has gotten so high that new game enemies are starting to deal 8000 base damage like at what point right at what fucking point do we go like all right. This, by the way, if you summon the two NPCs to help you here, so you finish their quest, because you got to do that to finish their quest. By the way, he has about like two hundred fifty thousand HP. I think like two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand in that ballpark. If you want to finish the NPC quests, this guy has like more HP than like New Game Seven Fire Giant. Like what? What? Why? Why? Yeah. Actually, why? No, seriously, like, New Game 7 Fire Giant has what, like 300k health? Like, this guy, this guy, if you finish the NPC quests in regular New Game, this boss has more damage and health than, like, a New Game 7 boss whose entire gimmick is that he's giant and really hard to kill. And it's like, yeah. holy shit! 
actually, holy shit, like, what and was the point of making the numbers my, that high? And my build, like, Tanner, 81% damage reduction is a shit ton. My build is pretty good. Like, it's definitely not bad at all. But I had around 60%, and I would die in two hits. Pretty much every time, you know, I have very high vigor. I still have a lot of damage reduction, you know. I got all the, the all the consumables, every buff you can get. And I died two hits. And he attacks really fucking fast. Really fast. Sometimes faster than you can react to, honestly. I, I just, this boss fight is just kind of miserable all around because of that. All right, so uh, let's let's move on to the next topic here. Let's see what's 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 on. So the list. Radon, um, another thing about Radon, the final boss fight, is that he's already an enemy. Yeah. Okay. We 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 want to start talking about reusing, but hold on. One one final note on Radon. He shouldn't even be here. This should be Godwin. This should be Godwin. Godwin and Mikola are the ones with the relationship. Like, the, Godwin should be the boss here. They should just say Mikola found a way to bring souls back. He brought because Godwin's body still exists. He's out there. So he just say, just fuck it. It doesn't matter. The, the writing that currently exists is so bad saying somehow he brought Godwin back. Like that's his new power as a God. He's like the ultimate life bringer or whatever would be more easily palatable than what we got. All right. So now let's talk about this. Oh my god. No, no, hold on. By the way, this, this. So, this is a main fight remembrance boss right here. And they reused them. Did we not complain about this with Estelle? Was was this not a thing that we bitched about when they did this with Estelle? You know, it is the same exact problem as the base game but is amplified. So much worse. So much worse. So much worse. Like like this, Ancient Dragon Man. Hold on, I just want to take a little detour. Talk about this guy real quick before we get into the, the enemy reuse. Uh, you fight this guy as an invader. Go through a five minute long cave section. Then he's the boss of that cave. Literally, what the fuck? The only difference is he has like 10 times more health. Like, dude, this is not a boss fight. This is just an invader with like 30,000 hit points. That's all it is. And you already made me fight him as an invader. Like, this is not a boss. But it's just full of shit like this, dude. So hold on, look yeah. at this, look at this, look at this. Field bot. Let me uh, let me let me let me turn dark 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 reader on real quick. So it's like, okay, look at this, look at this. If we're gonna count these as bosses, they don't have a boss like thing like duh, and then the music. And also, plays. if you see game journalists talking about the amount of bosses, like they say, there yeah, are eighty. Actu bosses actually, actually, it read some of these bosses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, three of these guys, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 tree sentinels, 23, 24 of these. So like 24, no, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Like, you see what I'm saying? Dude, it's like... Yeah. Of there's the still 40... Magma Worms, there's still Death Right Birds. Of, of, the, of the yeah. supposed 40 bosses in this DLC, like, literally, like, 80% of them are just... Re oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, let me timestamp this. Hold on. Uh, mm. 2028, 20, we talk about reused assets. Literally, of, of the fucking, like, 40 or whatever fucking supposed bosses, like, 30 of them are just repeats. Yep, so there's going to be around eight or nine furnaces. You're going to see, like, three hippos. Uh, there's, like, random tree sentinels. There's, like, two tree sentinels. Uh, it's, it's just, yeah, by the way, they literally reused the dual tree sentinel fight on a bridge. Like, it's to the point where they're literally just plucking bosses from the main game and just dropping them in the DLC in the same arena, the same boss, the same number of the same boss in the same arena. And it's like... Oh, speaking of the same arena, um, here, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pull it up on, uh, on the, on the other tab here and then drag it over, which is what I should have been doing this whole time. Uh, Dark Eater Medir, his arena got reused. Hold on, Elden <laughs> Ring, Fluorescent Knight. The Fluorescent Knight for Saint, or for Saint Trina's fucking quest. This yep. area is literally just a copy paste job of Elder of, of Dark Eater Medir's arena. Like, hold on, look, look at this. 
Look, look at this and tell me this isn't the same. Look at this arena. It's got like the purple, the water with the body sticking out. Look at this. It's got the purple, the water, the cave. You drop down to get here. Like this you, is a little graphical upgrade. Yeah, you cannot fucking tell me. Oh my god, I'm having difficulty, technical difficulty. You cannot tell me that this is not like the same general design setup. You just, you just, you just can't. You just can't convince me. That they are not just reusing. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, let me pull up the map here real quick. Do, 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 do. Where is it? I have the map somewhere. This. This rise is literally Rana's, uh, Rani's rise copy-pasted. Literally down to the last minute detail. They literally just went into the engine editor, lifted that fucking model, the interior, and all of it. And just plopped it right there. Just plopped yeah. it in the DLC. This is good. This gets so bad. Like they've literally reused entire sections of just unique tile sets and just plop them in the DLC. For like, like no take reason. uh like Bonnie Village and things like that. All of those, all of yeah, those, all those houses are just, yeah. Are they're in the base game? The Alber uh Albernak Village. It's all the same buildings. All the same shit. All right, let me uh, let me go back to our list here. Most of the bosses are re there's ten dragon fights by the way. Or, I'm sorry, I actually think there's more. There's like three Drake fights. There's an ancient fight. I'm not going to count the main dragon at the top of the peak because he's actually pretty unique. But it's like there's like five ghost flame dragons. There's like two regular dragons. There's three fucking Drakes, which are just dragons with less HP. They all just they're all the same fight. They all have the same moveset. They literally spam this boss. Let's see. Furnace and ghost flame dragon spam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. OK, OK. Holy shit. The, the 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 spam of some of these bosses there you will fight a ghost flame dragon there's a ghost flame dragon in the swamp in the literal first area right next to the big furnace golem like, and you know what you get for fighting this fucking by fuck the way. off nothing talk. yeah <laughs> yeah hold on like like right around here like right in this area there is a, a ghost flame dragon yeah it's like right here uh you fight this then right over here in the cerulean coast another one swoops down and fights you then, like, again, when you get, like, over here, there's, like, a big archway, like, over here. Another one tries to fight you. And it's like, guys, there's, like, five of these things. It's the same boss five times over. This DLC reuses bosses a greater number. There's a greater number of Ghost Flame Dragons in this DLC, which this DLC map is, like, small. It's small. It's small, and we're going to talk about that. Most of this is junk. You can cut out, like, this entire section, but we're going to talk about that later. And it's just like, dude, there is so much just shit. Like, fuck, they reused the bosses so goddamn much. I was, I never wanted to see another fucking furnace golem when we were nearing the end of this. Because, you know, there's, like, a furnace golem here. There's, like, two furnace golems down here. There's a furnace golem here. There, dude, there's literally a furnace golem that that guards these fields, you run down here, go across this bridge, there's a furnace golem at the end of this bridge. Like, if the draw distance was bigger, there are areas where you could see two furnace fucking golems back to back. And a ghost... If, if you were standing here and had unlimited draw distance, you would see two furnace golems and a fucking ghost flame dragon. All, like, within arm's reach of one another. And it's like, oh my god, this is not content. This map feels so empty if you don't count the... The, th the 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 repeat bosses but hold on we'll talk about the map next Th this is i should have uh pushed this up a few but uh mesmer i want to talk about the main man from uh, nazareth over here mesmer you really like mesmer yes i i think mesmer is really cool i think he's a cool fight uh doesn't matter though yeah so because uh, okay okay y you go first okay so Mesmer literally, like, we are given no explanation why he's here other than a few snippets of lore that say, like, mm. Merica sent him here to, like, wage war with the people on the tower with, like, the Chinese dancing dragon parade guy. We don't really know why she wants them dead other than, like, they're heretics, I guess. Like, it's a complete, like, nothing burger yeah. reasoning. So this guy is on the box art, and you... He narrates the trailer. Yep. Yep. And there is literally nothing of him, and he's just in a room. Yeah, yeah, you kind of got no clickbaited real hard with this guy. Because he he is shown in the trailer, very prominently. He's the last thing you see in the trailer. He narrates the trailer. He's on the box art. But this character is not in the he's DLC. He's not a character. 
No one talks about him. None of the NPCs mention him, like, borderline at all. They'll go like, oh, yeah, the Impaler's army marched here. And then that's it. Then they go on to the next topic. So he's not mentioned at all. His impact on the world is not felt. Dude, so he's like the Impaler. When you run across the bridge to, like, his fort... Yeah, you, you see a bunch of fucking people. But then you go like, to the to the dancing like dragon tower area, and I do not remember anyone being impaled there. But apparently, that's where he waged his war. This is what he was sent here for. Why is there no environmental storytelling showing that area completely destroyed and like the brutality of this guy and why he has his name? There's none of that. It, it's like, and by the way, I'm talking about uh this area, like this, this, the Bellarit Tower. This is where he was sent to like go fuck things up. And it's like, okay, there's like, there's really no like impaled people all over the place. Most of the buildings are clean. They don't seem damaged. Like if you had not had an NPC tell me that he was sent here to wage war with these guys, I would not have known that at all. Yeah. Like that yeah. is- yeah. I think this is an extreme waste of a very cool character. He's basically not in the DLC at all. The boss fight is really cool, but also it's- oh, it's Easy, it's out of nowhere. It's, it's over, yeah. and it's out of nowhere. You just kind of walk into a room, and you're like, "Oh, he's here." Yeah, like there's yeah. no build up, there's no fanfare. You kind of just walk into a room, and he's just kind of there. So look, he's in here. He's in the shadow keep, but like the shadow keep, the only thing we see of it is like a storefront. Literally, you walk in, and it's like shadow keep storefront. Why the fuck is there a store in the shadow keep? This seems like some Sauron Fortress of Evil type shit. But no, I just, Mesmer's just chilling here. My main man from Nazareth, Mesmer. He just chills here. He's not even at the top of the fucking tower, by the way. There's no. like an entire like five floors above him. He's literally just chilling in the middle on a, of the yeah, shadow. Yeah, you key. just, yeah, not even on the middle. He's on the left side. You kind of just walk to the left, like beside some stairs. Yeah, there's no build-up, there's no fanfare, he's not mentioned, he has no impact on the DLC, no one talks about him, you don't see, like, item descriptions mentioning him, you don't, like, get an item. Like, for example, this area is lush, green, Mesmer's all about fire and, like, the shadow and he's a snake and stuff. You would think these people, or, oh, I mean, there's no fucking people here because there's no characters because the map is empty! But it's like, you would think that, like, there would be some, like, nature guardian of this area or, like, the hinterlands over here that are like, keep this fucking guy and his flames away from us. Like, we are going to retaliate against this dude. Like, the way the trailer and box art looks, it makes it look like this guy is, like, a disowned son of Merica who's been building up his army here and conquered the Erd Tree in his own dimension. And now he's going to, like try to break into our dimension and try to take over here as well. Yeah, that's, it looks like that, he's some kind of, like, dictator character, you know? Well, that's what I thought was going to happen, by the way. I thought the DLC was going to be about Mesmer trying to get back into our reality so he can use his armies to destroy the Earth Tree and take over. That's so what I thought it was if, gonna be. if one of your main points of hype and you were really excited for this character and this fight and the lore around it, do not buy this DLC. There is nothing for you here. Genuinely. Yeah. Uh, Despite him being on the box art and all the trailers. About Mesmer. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else, what else, what else? Also, why does him removing his eye cause him to turn into, like, a snake man? I'm sure I just missed an item description. But again, like... You know how, like, in Dark Souls, you can just look at an enemy and you can learn a lot about them from their visual design? You can see how hollowed Gwyn is to see how hard he's fighting to keep on. You can see Seif is, like, embedding crystals in himself because he does experiments on himself. That's how he's immortal. This guy just has, like, a red snake. He's like a Rochimaru. He's just got, like, a snake dick coming out from his robe. And yep. then he takes his eye out and he just becomes Snake Man. Like, this guy is, like, he looks cool, but, like, I can't tell anything about him. Apparently, he's not, like, an evil dictator, like, but he, like, he also curses his mom. You know, he's like, oh, America, you forsaken me, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, this this is such a confused character. It feels and also, like, like, for the little amount that he's mentioned before you fight him, nothing changes after you kill him. Nothing at all. He's never mentioned again. He, he might as well have never existed. After you you could have removed this character from the DLC and nothing about it changes. Literally nothing about it changes. Like, I cannot stress how heavily hyped this guy gets in the marketing, yet he is a literal non-character in the DLC. Alright, let's see. Uh, okay, now we want to start talking about the map. 
Okay. Holy fuck, dude. The map. The map. Yeah, the map, the map, the map, the map, the map. This is a disaster. This An is the worst disaster. designed game world I think I have played in a very... I cannot believe I'm about to say this. I would rather explore an Ubisoft world than some of the parts of this map. For example, this area. This area is massive. This area takes up more space on the map than, like, you know, areas like the Shadow Key. Like, this is a central area. There's, like... Like, NPC quest lines all converge here at one point. Yep. Uh, Mesmer's here. You have to go here. Like, this area, like, seriously, like, 30% of the DLC takes place in this area. This this Shadow Keep. This whole area. This area is, like, five times bigger than the Shadow Keep. And there's literally nothing here. There's literally a church and this guy's house. You know? And it's like this. These finger areas are huge there's no items in them there is one enemy type which has a really fast moving range projectile that paralyzes you by the way which makes yeah. navigating it hell there's no gray sites in here there's literally nothing in here it just exists to be a puzzle for one npc's quest line so same with this this area while yes it's cool and this is where the all the dragons are but the dragons don't have any purpose in the dlc the dragons have nothing to do with like mikola and all the shit going on over here so, yeah. like, this area, like the Frenzy Flame Abyssal Woods, is cool but really underdeveloped. This area only explains – is only there to explain the worst part of Elden Ring lore that has ever been created. So you could shave off the Dark all, Woods, the yeah. mountain. You could also shave yeah, off the on, finger areas. If you put your mouse right here and you go up like this, you know, up like this, just near – then swoop around the Shadow Keep – you can cut all this off. I want you to take your hand physically. Hold on. Let me turn this off. Take your hand right now on your monitor and physically cover this half of the map where like from from where the shadow keep is and look at how small this is. Also, this area doesn't really serve much of a purpose at all. It just exists no. for St. Trina. So if you really wanted to get greedy, you could cut this off as well. The entire like entirety of the DLC takes place in this circular area. And yet despite how small it is, it's, it's going to take you a little while because it is constructed yes, like okay. a complete psychopath mess. made this. Okay. Yeah. So look at this map. Actually look at this. Look, this is a high level of elevation. This is a normal level of elevation. This is an impassable river. This is an impassable wall. This is a, a bottom level of elevation. So we have we have this is look, this is a mountain with multiple layers of elevation. This is the main road. So you start here. This is where you walk. Then you have to find a way up this mountain that has one, two, three layers of elevation. Then you have to find your way down here, which is the bottom of all this. And no, this doesn't connect into it. You have to come down here through a different route, like through a yeah. cave. So, so on those top right um, trees, like on the trees where you were just are. No, where you just Oh, you mean were. this? Yeah. So that dark area, that valley is not clear at all how to get down there you will die every time when you try and you're going to be spending like me and tanner me and tanner it, 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 about it, every uh, 10 yeah. minutes we're like we're where like, the fuck am i yeah or it's like how do you get there you can most see, of your time you, spent in this dlc will you, be spent yeah. just running you, around trying to figure out how to get where you oh, yeah, trying yeah. to go. We, we tried to get down here, by the way, at one point. And to get down here, you have to, like, go over through here, through a hidden path, come out here, go through this, then, like, come around. It's like, what the fuck? You can see all this content from, like, right here, like, right near the start of the game, like, right after the first, like, quote-unquote main boss. You can see all this shit. But to get and there's here, you no gotta, obvious like, way. You yeah. need to, you literally need to find an invisible wall. To yeah, access that yeah, part of the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's behind an invisible wall in a hidden section in the Shadow Keep. Like, dude, fuck off. Like, a like, actually, fuck off. You know what hidden walls were almost exclusively used for in Dark Souls 1, 2, and most of 3? Shortcuts to loop you back around to other areas. Invisible walls in Elden Ring are used to wall off content, to, like, artificially inflate it. So yeah. you just don't know where to how to get there. Me and Tanner probably spent around maybe three to four hours actually actively like engaging in gameplay and fighting enemies. The vast majority of our like 13 hour playtime 
was just spent running around trying to figure out how the fuck you're even supposed to navigate this area. It is a complete mess. None of it makes any sense. It's not fun to navigate. It's not fun to go around in. It's mostly empty. You can see that on the map too. Just very big open swaths of just trees and shit. Yeah, yeah. Look at these. Look at this. Look at the bosses overlaid. You know, look. It's like demi human, ghost flame dragon, chief blood fiend. This is just a literal a uh, trash mob that you fight constantly with bigger stats. This is just a rune bear. This is just a troll enemy. This is an actual. This is real an actual boss. boss. Yeah. yeah. And, and look, another ghost another flame dragon. Look, another fucking bear. A, another a, a furnace a golem. golem. Yeah, yeah, another golem. Look, another Death Knight. Like, this is what I'm saying. This isn't content. Within, like, look at this, look at this, look at this. Within this area, every single one of these enemies, except for this one, is a reused fucking asset flip that is, like, just endlessly spammed at you. Like, this is not content. Yeah, so if you ended up buying this DLC and you're past the replay point, don't even bother with this outside of the map. You're wasting your time and just... Have fun trying to actually look at this. If even if we set it to North all, Earth, even yeah. if we set it to all, like look at this area. This is ninety percent dead space, but yeah. with a with like one point of interest where everything is located. And, and also, and, most of those things are just crafting materials that you're looking at right now. Yeah, if we if get rid of away crafting, crafting consumables. Uh, oh wow! All of a sudden, it's getting a lot less populated. And yeah, let's weird. let's only have armors, Ash of Wars, bosses. Let's only have like actual things. Uh do 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 do. Okay, now now look at the map. If you zoom out real far, oh it looks like there's a lot of stuff. But then you zoom in and you're like, oh. And then half of this stuff are these little upgrades. So hold on, let's get rid of these as well. You know, let's literally just look at new things you can play with. Okay, and then let's get rid of the boss. Let's just look at, like, new items you items can play around can with. Play with yeah. And it's like, okay, so you 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 start here. You also, run, you should run. take off the summoning pool and spirit springs as well. You run, you run. Oh. It's even less populated then. And it's like, okay, we run, we run, we run. Oh, we get a new Ash of War. Okay, we run, we run. You know, there's a few things around here. But it's like, just look at how sparse... This shit is and compared to even the base with game how map. Sparse it is. All of this shit sucks. You're not going to uh, use ninety nine. Most, most of, of these items are bad. Like these hands, for example. These hands are like I did not find one that could really work. Well, see, here's the thing. Talking about this topic is really hard because you'll have some guy who's like, "So we're going to use this specific uh uh sigic flask. We're going to use these four talismans, and then we're going to use this ash of war and this buff." And it's like, okay, dude. Yes, any weapon in this game can be made pretty good if you use hyper damage setup. But the generic chud hyper damage setup works for just about like everything. If you just pick up most like this, this weapon pisses me off. I really wanted these to be good. They're uh, so cool. Like, like it, it feels like you're pontiff, literally. And yet, but they're so bad. They have D scaling in four stats, have a triple, have a, have a three way split damage type, and an Ash of War that adds less damage than just buffing the weapon normally with like yeah. a grease. And it's like, oh my God, you made this cool weapon, gave it a unique moveset, a really cool Ash of War, and it's like unusably bad. And also, another thing is that. If you pick these items up, you're not going to be able to use them in the DLC. The only things you're going to be able to use is fully maxed out shit. These yeah. weapons will not work. You cannot use these weapons in the DLC. And if you I mean, want to you, like if run you can, through the you DLC, you have to go with, back. You have yeah. to like go back to the craft guy and like remax all of them out. Yeah. Like you can't just pick one of these up and use it because you will do no damage. And it's just, it's just oh my god, it's just it's crazy how uh how so many of the weapons do not even fill a niche. It's like they just exist to be this this stereotypical stat block on this w archetype of weapon. Yeah, but it's definitely, like, even then, when it looks small, when you cut off all those things, the only reason it takes you as little time as it does is just because of how difficult it is to navigate. That's it. Most okay. of your time is going to be spent running around. 
I want to talk about these, which, by the way, there is way more of these fragments. This map does not do it justice, dude. There is so many more of these. There's like 60 of these. Okay, so the the scaling again let me uh let me go back to this so my weapon in the base game does about like 600 like 50 ish ar like my my regular katana here at the end of the dlc it was doing 1300 yes and same with the damage negation that also yeah, comes yeah my damage that. negation before like any consumables or anything was like, like 40, it, it, 50, it was like maybe? no it was like 37 really? percent go up to like 45 with oh yeah no meat. that's true yeah that's true so I even if that. you're using like the 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 great drake talisman and like heavy medium armor yeah you are looking at like 37 percent damage reduction like 40 something percent if you eat the crab meat so if you can you go back to the map real quick yeah all of this, this is not optional content. You need to get literally all of these. Now, hold you on, cannot... hold on, hold on, hold on. See, see, I have enough YouTube experience to know you can't say that. You're right. For 99.9% .9 of us, you're right. But there's going to be some guy who watches a video of someone who's, like, naked with no upgrades, fighting Radon for, like, three hours straight, and they're going to be like, no, you can. It's just a skill issue that you feel you need that stuff. And it's like, oh, my God, dude, shut the fuck up. I don't want to spend five hours wailing on a boss because it is, like, 70,000 HP and I hit for like 100 you know yeah. it's like like for the most part if like you listening to this video right now considering statistically you're just average player you will need to grab all of these this is not optional you need to grab these or you will not be able to play this DLC yeah, for the overwhelming majority of people, yeah, that is absolutely true. The problem like, with it'd that... It'd be one thing if they were, like, little optional completionist trinkets, but they're in such weird places, and they're so the problem, annoying. The, to get yeah, the, and the big problem with this is there's literally, like, 60 of these, dude. The, you have to travel all over this map, which is really aggravating to navigate because there's like it's you'll like you you can be right here and you can be like oh I see this place but how do I get there? Some opaque fucking off the beaten path shit like over here, and then they'll be like they'll be around corners and buildings and like you either have to scour every little bit of the map or have a guide pulled up and just go across the areas and grabbing them all. Yeah, no, it is going to take you forever to get this without a guide you probably need a guide to get through dlc like just because we, of like this alone near the end we started to cave and started using guides to like grab the few things that we missed because it's just like oh my god like there's there's no i wish there was an item that would like kind of point you in the right direction at least make it a little fun hunt but no dude it's literally just like and i'm just sitting here thinking if this DLC is just like 10 hours of running around grabbing this shit for the most part, which it is, like, do I, I don't want to replay this. If I were to play through this again right now, I know I'm going to have to spend at least about a full day running around on Torrent with a guide open, just grabbing this shit, going to every little gray site that I missed. And it's just a big chore. It's just a because big I don't chore. think you can actually max out, like, the max stacks on the default map or it's very hard to find all of them and they get up to the point where you need four for one upgrade so if you want to max this out have have fun and the funny thing is that this is just the bare minimum okay like 81 percent damage negation and you're still going to get railed by like like dude i i have had times where i had the max scout Scadu tree, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, is. yeah. By the way, what... It... Okay, hold on, hold on. Something I want to point out. Even with my, like, 80% damage reduction here, there were enemies in this DLC that would still two-shot me. And it's like... Dude, there's I... crash mobs that you walk by and they do, like, a quarter of your health. The fucking Crucible Knight in, like, the green area, his, like, wraparound hammer attack would, like, do 2,000 damage to me. Like, that motherfucker literally hits for, like, 10,000 without any defense. And it's like, dude, what, does this guy hit for, like, 100k in New Game 7? Like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. And, you know, like, I had, like, around 70, 75 Vigor at this time. You know? And, you know, I'm in, like, New Game 2. So, you know, I'm, like, level 300 in New Game 2, right? Like, I'm probably overleveled. And I am getting, like, bitch slapped by some basic enemies. Like, in the green area, for example... There are some fucking bug people that have homing attacks that are like aimbot. 
and they will instantly knock you off torrent and one shot you pretty much you can't not fight them you can't run past them they will literally kill you no matter what gear you have on. it's rough now i want to talk about with the, everything else yeah i want to talk about the next thing real quick so just on the topic of the weapons you need to beat moog which is like one of the last things you do in a playthrough then you need to play through the entire like let's say i want to play with Renala's twin swords I have to play through the entirety of Elden Ring, which, dude, that's a fucking monumental task and a half. That's going to take me like, you know, 12, 20 hours, most of which spent just running around on Torrent. Then I got to go through the fucking DLC. That's a monumental task. You know, that's going to be like a few hours of frustration just to get to that boss. And then it's like now I finally have the weapon to use on like the last three bosses or to just play through a new game plus. Elden Ring leans on New Game Plus as a crutch to actually use the shiny tools you get so fucking hard. And I just, I don't like it. I think this game has reached a point with FromSoft's desi where FromSoft's design philosophy starts to break. You cannot just shove all of this cool shit. There are now more weapons and spells in the last 70% of the game than there is in the first 70% of the game. Which is completely lopsided. It should be you get most things early so you can 30, use them. 30% of the game now has like, like 50, 60% of all the things you can build around. It is fucking retarded. It is, I'm sorry, it is. It is just retarded. They like, oh my god, there needs to be a way to get these specific items very early on in the game. I'm sorry, there does, does there needs to be a way. Because, like, you, I don't want to play through New Game Plus. It's boring. It's stupid. It's lame. Ah, the next topic. The story is absurd. Which, yeah, it is. Why is Mikola even inviting Tarnished here in the first place? He He's inviting us to lure us to kill Moog so we can rebuild Radon. But once Moog is dead, why bother? He knows the Tarnished can't be killed. He knows that we just keep coming back and we're going to keep hunting him down for his great rune, you know, for the earth tree and stuff. So he is basically inviting the Terminator into his world. Why? Yeah. So you're inviting this unkillable, unlike you cannot reason with it. You cannot get rid of it. It will never stop. And it has the power to usurp a god and you are just inviting it in. Huh? You already have your consort. It's not like we're going there to prove ourselves worthy to be Mikola's consort to like rebuild the world in a better image with him. No, we're we're actually there to fuck up the plan. So yeah. it makes no sense why he even wants us here. Like he's already a god. You get the message of somewhere a great rune has broken, blah 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 blah, like way before you meet Mikola or do anything that involves him. So it's like, okay, so you achieved godhood and got your consort way before the Tarnished, like, even needed to show up. Which, by the way, do you think Radon and Mikola fucked? Like, do you think they were fucking while we were just, like, doing the rest of the DLC after he breaks his great rune and ascends and revives him? I mean, what the fuck else were they doing on top of that tower, dude? Yeah, There's see, nothing like, there. Like, like, you see they, the fucking pile of, like, ash like just they, chilling there. Like, they, they, he becomes a god... And he breaks his great rune halfway throughout the DLC, and then nothing changes other than the mind control wears off and people stop, like, working together. But he doesn't, like, you know, you don't, like, hear his voice res resonate across the whole land, and then he just, like, causes all enemies to be charmed and to, like, or, you know, run to him and, like, serve him and stuff. Nothing changes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just, I literally just assume he becomes a god respawns Radon, and he immediately just gets on his knees. Like, I, I just, that that's all I can assume is happening. Because, like, he just becomes a god and then does nothing for the rest of the DLC. Like, I have to assume he just immediately gets on his knees, just pulls Radon's pants down, and just starts going like, you know, like, I just, I just can't assume he's doing anything else. Because, like, nothing changes. Yep. Yeah, also, th there's definitely some freaky shit going on there. Also, the trash mobs never change. Those shadow, like, those shadow hollows that you see as soon as you enter the DLC, I hope you really like them because they are everywhere. There are, like, three enemy types that show up everywhere. The Mesmer Knights, the Shadow Hollows, and the guys that are, like, 
golden armor. They have like the Moog helmets. Those three fucking enemies. I literally think there's at least one of them in every single area of the map. It is ridiculous. And then uh, the final thing I want to talk about here is you spend way too much time trying to figure out where to go, which just makes it all a very frustrating experience. Because in the base game, you usually had things to think about or sights to see in Oogle. Yeah. But there's none of that in the DLC. Like, one of the weakest parts of base Elden Ring is the Snowfield, right? But at least when you're going through that area, you're going there kind of thinking about, okay, I'm burning this fucking tree now. Like, this is a big story moment that I'm going to. Yeah, and Melania is begging you to stop the whole way. So even though a lot of it is just empty space, there's stuff for you to think about. Like, do I, is this really worth it? Should I go through with this? Blah, 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 blah. Then it's like, what was that chaos flame about? The guy said there's a way to burn it without killing her. And, you know, it's like, it, there's actual, like, content there for you, you, the person playing to grapple with. This is nothing. This is literally nothing. You're just you're just looking at an area and then trying to puzzle how you get to that area. Yeah, game journalists who said they they take over a hundred yeah, hours. How the fuck did this take people a hundred hours to fully clear? And by the way, a lot of game journalists by Bandai Namco were given detailed guides. I don't know if you knew that, but they were given guides that we don't have, like instructions on where to go, like where upgrade materials are. Basically, I just I, I guess I kind of want to end off on this sentiment here. Yeah. All pre-release reviews are bad. Everyone who if you, if they have access to a pre-release review copy, odds are the the company has done cost benefit analysis and they know that what that person is going to say is going to be worth it to them in terms of PR and marketing. They are never going to give a review copy to someone like me who, which I'm not asking, I'm not saying I should, by the way, I'm just saying like sake of the argument, someone like me who is known to be relatively negative and very critical of like everything, they would never hand someone like me a review copy. But someone like, like Vadi, who like his literal livelihood is dependent on these games being good and having a positive reception. Oh yeah, of course they're going to give fucking people like him pre-review and then of course people like him are not going to look at any flaws they're just going to be like oh my god i'm special they actually just gave me a review copy like it's my duty to like make people yeah. like the game you're definitely going to have some rose tinted glasses on there as well but remember yeah. look look all i'm saying is remember cyberpunk that was the highest rated game like ever until it came out and people were like this sucks starfield. remember when they said it ran surprisingly well on consoles starfield starfield got like 99s 100s out of 100s across the board by every outlet ever then it came out everyone hated it and now this this is the highest rated dlc of all time based off pre-release review scores now it's out it's sitting at like a 70 percent at steam during the day one honeymoon period people are already over it like, that's all I'm saying. Pre-release reviews are bad. Hype is bad. Stop buying into it. Use yes. your critical thinking skills and actually assess if something's going to be good. Yeah, and also, just remember that... Oh, okay. Is that the oh, no, no, no. Uh, what did you want to say? Oh, no. I was just going to say that... Really think about why... The motivations behind people. Basically what you were saying, like... Vadi, the other thing... The other thing I think I he's a cool guy, but... He has a vested interest in you thinking that it's good. Right. And that the story is deep and there's yeah. more to it than there actually is. Of course. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. Here's, the, here's another thing I want to say. Like, this DLC is a big miss for FromSoft. This is not worth $50 that they're charging. This DLC is... It's just... Oh, no, you, hold on, real quick. And I'm sorry to keep ragging on, this, on, on the Vadi guy here, but he said that <laughs> this DLC is the size of Limgrave if they forgot to mention that Limgrave was three times bigger than it actually is. Uh, no. No. Uh, no, especially when you consider 30% of the map is literal dead zone that has nothing in it. Like, uh, no, this is not, like, this is about as big as Limgrave. The only difference is there's, like, these long stretches of roads with literal nothing on them. Limgrave... You know, like, here's the thing. In Limgrave, this area would have, like, three side dungeons in it with bosses, an NPC to talk to, and, like, you know, a bunch of items to pick up, and it would all be compacted in this area. 
the DLC has a furnace golem. Uh, one boss here, which I'm trying to remember the name of. Okay, whatever. I think it might just be an invader or something. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is a fucking invader. So this, in Limgrave, this would be like three bosses, a bunch of items. There's actual stuff to do. In the DLC, it's a boss and an Ash of War. And that's it. But instead, like, look at this distance from here, from this main boss, all hmm. the way to here. There's literally nothing in this area. This oh, there's also one point that we were talking about before that I think we should mention. Uh, the reuse, like, if you just compare it to the base game, imagine if there was, like, ten tree sentinels in Limgrave. Yeah. Dude, like, no, but by the way, hold on, by point. the way, look at this, look at this. I have everything showing right now. Look, there's literally nothing in this area. <laughs> yeah. Like, this whole area just exists to pad the map. You know, and then you go down here. Look, there's literally nothing in here. Look, there's literally nothing in here. Like, that's what I'm saying. This yeah. whole side of the map could just be cut off. There's nothing here. So it really makes me confused as to what they were doing, because a lot of this is dead space. There's way more reused content. And it took two years and 50, 40, 50 dollars for this. Uh, I don't know. I don't buy it. All right. I think uh, I think that covers just about everything. Yeah, I would say so. All right. See you. See you guys later.